All right, guys. Uh, Saturday afternoon, special edition of uh, we're gonna call this one South High Banter and Bullshit, man. Um, here I am tonight with a good friend of mine, legendary South High running back, Bismarck Osei. He we've already discussed this. He's already agreed to do this entire podcast on the bike. <laughs> nice, but that's yeah. it, you know? I mean, the, how old are you now? I was born in 1983. I stopped counting at like 26, so whatever. <laughs> that's good enough for me, man. You, if you can still drive around at that age, man, like that, doing this, you get, I mean, geez, <laughs> phenomenal. I'm definitely in my 30s. I'm definitely past my mid-30s, you know? That, hey, enough said. Not <laughs> That's what I tell the ladies. I'm uh, past the mid thirties. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, perfect. I love it. I love it. So, uh, man, I mean, I couldn't be more grateful. Thank you for coming here today. Uh, we've been trying to do this for a long. We've been trying to play Madden for twenty years, I think. Uh, oh, man. yeah. I'm ranked. I'm literally ranked ninth in Japan and Madden. I've never. I've never. <laughs> <ranked>. <laughs> hey, <'cause laughs> nobody. Has, man, that's why I'm ranked ninth in Japan. Uh, un unbelievable, man! Unbelievable. Uh, so we're going, we're going super South High heavy tonight. This is, I love it. I couldn't be more in my element. I love it. Uh, we're coming off a night here. I mean, let, we can talk right away about what happened last night. Um, Mr. LaRose, Mr. LaRose with uh, 413 yards, seven TDs. Coach's son is balling. And, so and, and it's Bobby LaRose. Yes. Seven touchdowns. That's like, I mean, that's like almost unimaginable. If you think about it, that's like Al Bundy couldn't even imagine that, that kind of game. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, you, you're not kidding. That's Pokai, wild. baby. Pokai. That's so, it. Yo, South High is back in the mix, baby. And absolutely. So I don't know where, I don't know. I, I didn't really introduce you properly enough. I guess uh, how many yards you have all time. We got that stat handy. Oh man, I I knew I knew I rushed for a whole lot of yards. Um, a whole lot is good enough for me. But are you the all-time leader? Where are you at when you got out of there? Yes, I was a, I was all-time leader for a while until I think the kid from Auburn broke it. Yeah. I think the kid from Auburn ended up breaking uh breaking the record, and um and and I was con congratulations to him. You know what I mean? Are you the sole um, high leader now? I I believe I believe I, I am. I believe I'm not sure. But right, let's give it up to you. Until we get, until we get, they must have that. I'm gonna give. I thought you were at that time, cause you. How many years yeah. did you play? Like, like, like I said, when, yeah, when I played, man, I never really played for. I never looked at the stats. I never checked the stats. People would tell me. People would tell me how good I was doing. I was just running for my life. You know what I, I mean? Know you were. <laughs> I was. Just, I didn't start playing. I didn't start really playing organized football until my sophomore year in high school. Yeah. So people were like, like he's so fast, he's so quick. I'm like, I'm just trying not to get hit. Yeah. Uh, let me tell and you, and he's not lying, guys. I I went to school with this dude. I already, I mean, we go we go back. I'm telling you, he just popped up, man. What you you won the Super Bowl, man? I mean, I, I I'm gonna pull my highlight tape on a on, on the gram pretty soon. But there was a game where I juked everybody twice. So I juked 22 people because it was 11, obviously 11, 11, 11. But I juked everybody twice. You're not like lying. he just won. <laughs> You are not lying either. I would, I would love to see that, man. Unreal. Wow. It was um, great days. Good old, the good old days, man. It's like you could never, you could never, um, you could never repeat that, man. High school moments were some of the best moments, man. Absolutely. Could I, South High, baby. I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, the Colonels, man. You, there, there were two eras. There was your era and then the era in the 80s with Freddie and uh, Coach Hall. Yep. The gym. And, uh, Yep, and the Kramer and, and the brothers too, I think, right? Yeah, but, oh know. man, yeah, they, the the eighties, man, that was. But the, to you, were one era, you know what I mean? Who's uh, yeah. who's your quarterback? Was it uh, it was Sean, right? So we had my quarterback. We had Corey Sharuzic, who's a state trooper now. So Corey, Corey, yeah. Corey, Corey was my quarterback at least for two years at a time, and then and then Ray Gibbery was my quarterback my freshman year. I got so it. I don't know if you I had the year that I played with, uh, well, the year I made it, what, game two, whatever. Yeah. Like Ray Gibbery, I almost got killed, and that's when I knew I had to stop playing football. I don't know what, <laughs> uh, it was Sean Haggerty, a holy name. He came through the line and crushed Ray, and Ray walked away holding his neck. Big Jim was upset. I was like, I'm not meant for this. That was terrible. Yo, yo Ray Gibbery was like, he was like, he was like uh, Mr. Miller's son. He was just like, 
you yeah. could just tell he was a tough, tough, gritty kid. You know, yeah. it was like it was like uh, Mr. Miller molded him. <laughs> yeah, 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 no doubt. Ray, Ray's a great dude too. He's a veteran. Or well, I mean, he, he was in the Navy, right? Or uh, yeah. So yeah, he was. I, I, I used to I used to live next to his um his sisters for a couple of years and on Grafton Street, Worcester. So so I, I we we would always talk about uh about him all the time and yep, kind of yep. catch up. Ray Lefty. Lefty quarterback. That's all I remember yeah. behind me. I remember Ray. What a great kid too. He's a phenomenal. Was he? Was he also, right? A pitcher. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Really, all around yeah. phenomenal. Lefty. Corey Sharuzik, though, he was like the golden boy too. When uh, yeah. Corey, Corey was one of the, one of those kids that have played football forever. Because the thing about the thing about Worcester is, um, a lot of kids like some a lot of kids don't grow up playing for the Vikings or the Cowboys and start early. So like a lot of kids. They start playing organized in high school. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Corey and the Justin Sleepers and maybe like a handful of guys on our team, they have been playing for the Vikings. And those, you could tell the difference because those guys had experience. They love to get hit. You could always tell people that play football for, because they, they, they love to get hit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and and, that, and that, now that was the biggest difference, you know? And, and you know what's really overshadowed too, man? You just, you, you brought up something in my head. Justin Sleeper, what an underrated Korea, that guy had man. He dominated Pittsburgh. He oh won. man! I, I mean, I, people don't understand how 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 athletically did. I mean, Justin lived with me at Northeastern when I was in college in Northeastern. He would he he stayed with me my whole summer. Every summer, he lived in the dorms with me. We uh we worked out together, and then and then he would go play. It was crazy, and then I, I just you know so I I just saw him develop into a great football player that he he actually already was. He just he just grew into his body. That's all that's all it was, you know. Yeah. Yeah. He was a monster, absolute monster. So uh, at, North, at Northeastern, did you you played you played lacrosse? So at Northeastern, I did I did fo football obviously because I was a full football scholarship. Yeah. Then I did uh, I did indoor track and outdoor track. So I still I still had the record there for uh, at Harvard that I broke for the indoor 60, 60 meters. So so I mean like you know like football football was obviously like. You know, it's all day, all day. You got class, you got you got practice, you got meetings. Yeah. The, the track stuff, man. I'm just now. I was naturally fast, so so you know that moved, was. They they moved. You played. Um, you were defense in Northeastern, right? I played cornerback, and I, yeah. that's. And if I could go back in time, I'll probably I probably would have stayed because at one point they had switched me to running back, and um and I I mean it's a spring game. I had the most rushing yards, but I just like there was something about playing in the secondary that was more fun, like. You run other guys. You're talking shit. You're yeah. like you're jumping around. You know what you know what I'm saying? And it's just yeah. and, and so I just I just had so much fun playing playing corner. And I was like, okay, I, I could start at corner or be part of a running back rotation uh a committee. You know what I mean? Yeah, you love to play. You love the game. Exactly. That's but it. if I could do it all, all over again, I would definitely um I would definitely go to a school and just really focus at running back because that's 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 how I was able because I'm really fast, really quick. I, I have great athletic ability. I mean, the only way I could show that is a running back. On defense, they, they don't even throw the ball your way. You might play a whole game and, and not do anything. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, so like, yeah, if I could do it all over again, I would definitely, uh, I would definitely play running back, you know? I'm going to put you on the spot. The greatest coach, the greatest coach you ever had in your entire football career. Oh, come on, man. That, that's probably, this answer is probably the, the answer for a lot of uh, NFL players. A lot of college players, Don Brown. Don Brown was was a guy who, who recruited me. He's originally from Spencer, so he coached at UMass Northeastern. He was a head coach at Northeastern, head coach at UMass, and he was a defensive coordinator at Michigan. Um, put in work there. Um, he was with the Harbaugh for a couple of years, and I think now he's uh he's he's at a different school now. Still, still, he was at BC for a while. So this guy, I mean, this guy will have you running through a brick wall, man. That's how good of a coach he is. Really, I dude, I yeah. love that you that you snapped that answer off that quick, and I love that yeah. I, I've never heard that name. That might, that's an underrated Don, name. Don Don Brown. He was a defensive coordinator for Michigan recently, um, and like I said, he, he coached at BC. The, um, he was a head coach at Northeastern, and this guy is, I mean, he's just one of the all-time greatest coaches, players coach. Um, he loves to blitz. He's a defensive uh, defensive coach. He's the reason why I stayed at defense because I I should have been a runner. I should have been playing office, but. It's just so much fun. You want to play for him. You want to like run through a brick wall for him, and that's that's just really the kind of coach he is. You know? So it doesn't match up with the the who gave you the greatest locker room halftime speech of all time. 
Oh, that's the, the, that the one that hit because I I have in my short career I have one. It was at it was South and it, it dealt Rigo and those guys, but that was oh, like man. man. I mean, I've I've had so many, but I mean the 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 best one would have to be from the same coach of uh, Don Brown because I remember we we played we played Ohio like a division a division one we were division one double A yeah. they were division one so they paid us to fly in there and play them thinking like it's their homecoming they're gonna smash us right so we we get there our coach gives a speech he's like we're gonna fucking get over there get off the fucking get off the fucking flight we're not playing around we're gonna kick their ass take their fucking check and go back to Boston. <laughs> he goes they're going back to Boston and uh, yo, and, and literally, <laughs> we beat them twenty-eight to zero. I had an interception at the end of the game. Everything we literally destroyed a team that thought like we, they were, it was gonna be a cakewalk. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and and that's really what that's. That, I mean, we obviously we had talent. We had great talent too. But that was the kind of coach he, he really was. You know? Yep. So yeah, yeah well. definitely. Man. Have you uh, did you check out any of the uh, Mass Pirates games this year? I didn't get to go to a game, but um um obviously um. I was able to uh to, to watch the kid that uh, the kid that owns uh, the team with the, with the father. When I played for the surge, he was actually like our ball boy. He was a quarterback that was he used to come and work out with us. And his really? dad obviously, yeah, and his dad obviously invested money into the surge before that too. So he was around all the time. The kid that owns uh the pirates. So I mean, I just never got to go to a game, but obviously they won the whole thing. And I know some of the players, and I was definitely they're definitely proud of them. You know, I went to um. I went to the semifinal and I got to a front row 50 yard line. One all their highlights I'm in doing my own, you know, recording. I yeah. was covering it because uh the Riveras, AJ and Jose, they were there. They're AJ's very good friends with the owner. And in fact, uh next Wednesday's podcast is gonna be AJ Rivera. Um, oh wow. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. But he he also he's good friends with the owner, he trains him in boxing. Um yep. I was talking about Rob Orell earlier. He was he's uh, the line coach for the Pirates he used to play with yeah. the Nichols. I used to work with him at the Blarney. The good old Blarney Stone, baby. So, oh uh, man, I miss the Blarney Stone, man. I miss it. I, I, miss it. I Blarney, worked. With, I worked the very last shift they were open, man. Heartbreaking. That was man, heartbreaking. I, it, it was a good spot to just just be able to go in and, and just like relax. You know what I mean? Have a have a beer without. But you know, I guess all good things must come to an end, huh? It's sad. It's reality, though. That's yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, it's a, it's a... Yeah, but it's that back... Pirates game, man, I'll tell you, it was phenomenal. And uh, I, I'm, I regretted that that was my first game ever. But I, I will definitely be in there next year. Yeah. Uh, and even next, I talk to like I said, I talked to Jawad too. I'm like next year, I'm like I, I, I she's like, yeah, if you want to come help out, coach. I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna find time to get involved. You know what I mean? I mean, Snake. I don't know if you know Snay was the offensive coordinator. Yeah, that, yeah. Snay, and he used to coach. He coached. He coached at South. Um, I think he, he. I think the recent Super Bowl South High won. He was the head coach. Uh, Snay. And so he he was the offensive coordinator for the Pirates, and um, and so I guess he's he's doing well too with that. So that's that's another South High School uh product. Hell product yeah. That's, that's doing well. Hell yeah. You know? I'll tell you, it was it was. I'm unreal, man. Being up that close, I mean, I was on the on the rail, but they got a good setup down there. Hopefully next year they can pack those crowds. You know, how, uh, was, the, how was the crowd? That's what I didn't understand. How was the, how was the crowd? Was it um was it like half half the place packed up or what? Uh, I would say yeah, just about half, man. Yeah, he jumped off there for a sec. Um, I mean, it, it, not as many that should have been there for these guys to have the season that they did. Uh, to go and win the ship, man, that place should have been packed to the walls. But next year, is, a lot of people still don't understand um arena football or because of COVID. I think obviously COVID had a lot to do with it too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, and and it's, I mean, it's promotion too. You know what I mean? And and connecting these guys. You know, I, I actually was talking to AJ. I'd love to to podcast these guys and get you know get everybody to know who they're going to watch and. Yeah. No, that it's a shame. That season was they had they were stuck on the ship, man. Yeah, you but what I about, do, like, are you still in shape? Are you you think you can oh, walk man, I, no, I, I there's nobody that could beat me in a race. I'm telling you right now. The kids I coach, I'm um, behind whatever, you. I, I've weighed so I've I've always weighed ever since I was a freshman in high school between 180 and 190, and I've still weighed the same. The only difference is 
fact is, when you get older and you go through, obviously, a, a different coaches, different levels of sports, and everything, you learn how to take care of your body. So now I know how to stretch better, get get get, get proper rest. So like, dude, I'm I think I'm I think I'm faster now than I was before. If I if you just give me a month to train and get back into it, because I'm you know what I mean? Because obviously, I, yeah, I get the the muscle fibers fully back to um, what's it called? Fast twitch, fast twitching, you know. <laughs> but I'm telling you right now, like, if anybody's on this podcast, what's this podcast? If they want to race me, I would I will race them. Just give me a week to get ready. I, I absolutely yeah. back that. Dude, we can make it a thing. I mean, yeah, yeah, hey, you're gonna, yeah, almost in midlife crisis too, man. It's gonna come around. Yeah. You're gonna think you can still do it, and it's a. Uh... No, you gotta, you gotta stay forever young, man. That's why, that's why I don't stop riding a bike or, or all the other, all the things that keep you so young. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know how long it's been so far, but it's gonna be at least a half hour. So you're, you're, you're there. Yeah, you're yeah, not I'm sweat. doing it. You haven't even broken yeah. a thought. I got, I got, I got a little, I got a little jerry curl drip coming down. You see it? <laughs> <laughs> a jerry curl drip coming down the side, but it's all right. Promotional value, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so now, what, what your name on uh, Instagram is is Flushable Whites. I need to know. Yes. <laughs> I need to know. <laughs> so, so obviously, is is the UEC is Biz underscore is Mark. But and then under it's flushable wipes because when I was when I was creating the IG, I was like, all right, so what should my name be? Or like, you know, people put quote and stuff like that. And I was I was sitting, I must admit, I don't know where I was sitting. It wasn't the bathroom though, so I can't I can't say that. I was sitting somewhere and I saw flushable wipes was right there, right in front of me. So then I was like, yo, I actually love flushable wipes. I really do. Like <laughs> it's like it's like a necessity. So I'm like, oh, you know what? That's that, that's something I could put up. That's sentimental. It's sentimental to me. You know what I mean? I love that. I love. There's, yeah. there's got to be meaning behind everything, like a story. You know what I mean? Love man, it. yeah. This, that was that's that's what it was, man. Flush, I got I probably got flushable wipes in every bag that I carry because <laughs> I'm just seeing just just seeing my face with or something. You know what I mean? It's just <laughs> that is awesome. Yo, yo, <laughs> flushable wipes market. If y'all need me to market, remember, remember that. <laughs> phenomenal, dude. Yeah, no, that, that's free advertising for them, man. That's <laughs> awesome. Yo, they've been getting free for like five years, man. I've been, I've been, I've been flushable wiping for like five years. So, so tell me about these videos you're doing, man, because I've seen them. You've been doing them for a while. I don't, I guess I'm old, man, because I can't, I barely know how to use Instagram. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm that old, but I think I'm in denial. <laughs> so, so the, with, with the, with the videos and, um, it's just basically my personality, man. You know, I'm, I'm very theatrical, hyper person, um. Uh, super, uh, what's, what you call it, emotional. So a lot of times we, I like to capture that. And my sister and my niece, they help me capture those, some of those moments. But I also like, I also like TV production. That was what I, in South High School, where we did SMS Live in Sullivan, South High School, I had my own TV show. I was a theater major before switching to sociology. So I've always liked that kind of stuff already. So now I just kind of, so when I do it for fun, it, it's always great content. You know what I mean? I, and it's I was a- I shocked. I was. I can't believe it was the first time I seen it. Cause you don't. You're not on Facebook. No, I'm not. I, I had a Facebook, and my, I'm actually. I actually miss it, man. That was another sentimental thing that I loved. But because I, after you graduate, it, I think I think after like four years or so, or maybe five, if you don't change your school, like the your last name Edu at Neu, if you don't change it, they give you a time period, and, and then they just kind of like drop it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I changed my uh, my email address to my my regular one. And so, and then they basically just, so that's what happened. And um, I actually miss it. Maybe one day I'll go to California and uh, maybe they, now, they got an archive. archive now, tell, now tell the real story. I was creeping on you for that Madden game and you wanted to hide. I know what happened. I know what, what all, all about that. <laughs> what happened? Come on, what happened? <laughs> what happened? Dude, remember we, we talked shit for so long and then we met up and I was like, PlayStation. You were like, Xbox. I was like, how? No, how do we not? PlayStation. I'm back on PlayStation now. I'm, I'm a PlayStation guy now. I, at the time, though, I was an Xbox person because that's that's all I had. You know what I mean? Now I have the Xbox and PlayStation, so I realized the PlayStation is much better. I don't. Yeah, man. I I've always been PlayStation. Uh, I have no idea why, but I just stuck with it. I don't know. No, but, it's better. The controls are better. It's much smoother. Uh, uh, but it's just like the, the uh, system I got first was the Xbox, so I just got you know. The only thing that changes is that now it's 2K for me. It's, uh, 
I, I, I don't really, I don't know, Madden, I love, but it's been more 2K. Oops. <laughs> it's, it, it's crazy. And sometimes I get stuck with playing the old games. Like, I like FIFA a lot. And sometimes when they make the new ones, I like, like, I, th I think the older ones are better sometimes. Uh, no doubt. The, it's the best video game of all time. There's been a lot of talk about that. I, I we we got to chat that. Uh, Madden 2005 is probably my favorite Madden ever. Probably my favorite game ever. Who was, who was in the cover of that? Michael Vick. You know what year oh, that was. The 2000 of Michael Vick is, the, is, the, is the, 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 the cheat code of all time. The most cheating athlete that, of all time that, in a video game. <laughs> no, that was the one. That was the one. You're right. Yeah, like that. It doesn't get better than that one. It doesn't get better. Yep. Oh, that's um, true. We also talked about uh, Super Tecmo running backs. I I shouted Christian Okoye, obviously Bo Jackson. We got uh, I don't know. Dave Meggett was was big time back then. Emmett Smith too. Barry Sanders. You said but, but Jerome Bettis, Jerome Bettis on that list? Nah, yeah. he's yeah, lady he is, but he definitely is. Joe Montana football. That's another yeah. underrated game. Bettis was yeah. a beast, the bus. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, boy, he just trucked the whole. He trucked the whole team. Yeah, 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 yeah. No doubt. No, was, no game. No doubt. Um, so let's go back to South. Give me your greatest game of all time that you've ever had, uh, stats wise, or the most meaningful game of all time. Your career. Of my, of my, the most meaningful game, I would say there was a year, I think, I think it was like my, my junior year, right? And I think we were going to play Weston, like Weston, you know, it's a, a rich town, probably, I think it was the second richest town in, in Massachusetts or New England or something like that. But yeah, so we get there, we get there and we pull up at a, at somebody's house and it wasn't even, it wasn't even a school, it was somebody's house. <laughs> so I'm like, it's crazy. So like, I'm looking at my, Looking at my teammates' faces, they all look kind of scared a little bit. Cause they're like, yo, damn, we're about to go play these rich kids. Like, the field is mad nice, the uniforms look good. Like the kids, you know, the rich kids eat good. So the kids, the kids are bigger than us. So we get there, and I think the first play, we were smacks one of them in the mouth. Bam! And that yeah. changed. Just one hit by Weaver McGurn. He just as he just, I don't know, he hit a he hit a linebacker with a full it just, and that was it. These kids, like, they got punked so fast. Dog, it was like we we it was a blowout. We beat them by like four touchdowns. And that was all because we would just we we just really just uh we bullied them just because we had two bullies on our team. <laughs> we were right. We were man. We were and and uh, we had a kid named Larry Walker. Before the game started, I think I think Jerry Kramer would tell him, like, yo, go scare these kids. And he would go up <laughs> to all the kids and say, he goes, I'm gonna fuck you up, I'm gonna beat you up. <laughs> he goes, I'm gonna fuck your mom. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I know, uh, look at it. Big Jim. Uh, I mean, he he knew about all that shit and the huddles and shit. Man, and it, and it was, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, and I'm like, Larry, Larry, hey, Larry, I'm like, why do you always do that? He goes, yo, the coach likes it when I do it. I just yeah, yeah. Die. But but that was yeah. that was all part of fun, you know. It was just, it was, it was, it was. But Leicester, man, we played Leicester. We had some good games against Leicester, but I, I feel like it never went our way, and it was always. It was always too much animosity, so the game we never played, we never actually played football. I think it was always like, oh, like more like um, this, rivalry. This, 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 yeah, rivalry, yeah. So we we fought game, Leicester for years, man. We fought. Yeah. I mean, that was just that was bread for you guys when you guys took up when you won that Super Bowl, man. That was actually yeah. The game, the games were always good, man. But you know, like Leicester, Leicester was one of those. I wonder why it was a rivalry like that. Oh, because Rigo. I think it was a rivalry before Rigo even went out there. It yeah, there, there was a lot, lot that went on behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Boy, Shruzik, so. I wish we were here. I invited him in, but you know, he's tied up with a birthday party. He'll still jump on, but... Uh, oh, yeah. Corey Sharuzik, man. They jumped that's for my Corey. Guy. That's my quarterback, man. That is, yeah, dude, that's, that's what we did, man. Airport mini yo, They know about it. I can't, <laughs> I can't believe Corey's a state trooper, man. I'm like, yo, if he ever pulls me over, imagine your quarterback from high school <laughs> he pulls you over as a stadium. I might be like, all right, see you later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, he what a good dude, man. And Mike Shruzik, he, yeah, he was a He was a another great running back. Not only that, he's a, also a, a military guy, you know what I mean? Service guy. So yeah. I think him 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 and his brother both are both uh are both state stadies, but they're also military and so you know, they yeah. definitely did they, they definitely um 
put their life on hold for for America, you know. So absolutely, credit, give them credit for that. Absolutely, hundred percent, man. They're a good family. I know they had some recent loss. I know. Uh, what the the, the the youngest brother, right? Yeah. 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 So. Oh, you jumped off. There you go. Hold on, I'm coming back. You see me? You're back. I got you. You jumped yeah, off. I had, to, I had to put the, 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 the charger on and get it back on. You see me now? I see you now. Man. Even, <laughs> it, even, even, even the blackness of the screen is not dark, as dark as I am. <laughs> you got to see the sun shining right behind you. Oh, it's man. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, man. The oh, so, man. Uh, you know, we had the, the Big Jim tribute. Um, yeah, we'll be doing another one of those. Give me, give me your background with Big Jim. Uh, so I still call him Mr. Miller, Jim Miller. I still call him Mr. Miller because I never, I never got over. I never felt too old to call him Mr. Miller. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so my best, I have a lot. I have a lot because he was my track and field coach. Not only was my football coach for two years, he was also my track and field coach for three years because Rigo's wife got Rigo's wife got a got a job at Holy Cross. So yep. She took the head coach. She took the head coaching job to coach the woman track and field team at Holy Cross, and and that worked that worked well for her. She's still there. Um, so Mr. Miller took over the track team, and and this dude would kick me off the team every single <laughs> week because like I would you know what I mean I, I was just being a high school kid. I didn't really want to go to practice or whatever, so I would show up late. And a lot of times I was lifting with the football team. So he's like, no, this is you have to do track. It's, it's not a football thing. So I would have to do a hundred push-ups every time to get back on the team. So that that I never forgot that. Mr. Miller kicked me off the team every week, and then I would come back and I have to do a hundred push-ups to get back on the team every time. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was I was a state I was a state champion in hundred meters or something like that. I was like I had the best time, and this dude wouldn't even let me run in the states until I did a hundred push-ups before the before the race. Yeah. So yeah. I was all tired. I think I lost. I, I got it. I came in third place because of him. <laughs> 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 Yo, it was after my prom. I showed up. I showed up for the race at Worcester State. He's like, "You got to do hundred push-ups, or you can't run today." I'm like, "Dude, not only am I hungover, <laughs> <laughs> now you're gonna do hundred push-ups in, 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 in my state championship meet." So I did it. I did it. But need to say, between the push-ups and all the dehydration, third yep. place was all I got that day. So we were talking about yeah. uh, another service member, AJ and Dodd. Yep. AJ, AJ is cool, man. AJ that is cool. He's a AJ was a was a specimen, man. He, he was just like built out of a out of a some kind of some kind of box or something, man. He just had the calves, the muscles, you know what I mean? He didn't have to work for it, you know? So but AJ, I think he's in Texas now, right? He is. I, I, somebody told me he's doing is he is he a chef or something like that? No, he uh he posts a lot of food pictures. But oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, he, he loves it, man. He loves it. Yeah, I, so, I tell you, it got it got hot, man. Back in them days, it got hot. Yeah, I, I mean, for him, man, I think, I, I think for him, I think he's a guy that I, I felt like should have got, should have got recruited and someone to a big school, should have could have been a great running back for Division One. But he just, it just never, it just never worked out for him in high school. You know what I mean? I, I, I believe he had Matt McGurn as a lineman. Uh, yeah. I bet, you know, he didn't have a lot of a lot of talent in front of him. I'll, I'll say that straight up. But. No, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, he was bigger than he was bigger than some of the linemen he had, but it was it was a different time too. It was, I mean, anti high at that time was tough, man. It was a lot of tough. You got they were playing St. John's, and St. John's was really good. I mean, it was just it, it just it wasn't it was just they were they were in a division that they just they just couldn't compete with. You know what I mean? Coach Lee Hall, holy man, Cross, Mr. Hall, him. man, what a coach, huh? I he went. I'll tell you, man. I feel bad. His Grey Cup got stolen, but what a career that guy's had, and his kids wait, are on the same what, path. Wait, what got stolen? From, what got stolen? I didn't know. Remember, he won a Grey Cup, I think. Uh, the CFL and his house got got broken into or something. And they took his Grey Cup. Oh wow! Yeah, bad he's been doing, he's been doing well too. He's been doing well with the coaching too. He's with the Seahawks, the Colts. He's been head coach a bunch of places. Uh, friends with Stephen Jackson. Early years, uh, when yeah, he man, he's, he's, and Oregon State, and I mean, he's done, he's done well, man. He's done. I mean, I mean, if you think about it, he started, he started. We went to Holy Cross, played at Holy Cross, which I'm wearing the hoodie now, and was a teacher at South High, coach at South High, 
and then he just took off, man. So, you know, he was destined, though. You, he, he was destined, man. If you, if you look at his background, he was destined for greatness, you know? Oh, no doubt. No doubt. I think He's even his kids, I, I, I think even his son, his son was a good running back, right? No, his son right now is a wide receiver. He's just wide receiver, yeah. He's so, killing yeah. it, putting up big numbers, too. Uh, his daughter, I believe, was like, Ranked in the fifties, uh, I know low low numbers in uh, recruits in the United States. So oh wow, what sport? What sport? Basketball. Just Basketball. Wow, yeah. Killing it. Absolutely. Okay, killing okay. It. So that's, uh, that's... What's your what's your interaction with Rigo? Any any good Rigo stories? Because that guy's oh an man, I got I got a <laughs> I got a lot of good <laughs> Rigo stories, but Rigo Rigo <laughs> yeah, Rigo exactly. is the best. Yeah, I think I think Rigo made Rigo turn me into a man in high school though. I think because I, I, there was a there was a time where like I think Rigo thought I was gonna quit and I didn't quit because uh, when I first started playing football, it was my sophomore year in high school, and um, so we had practice. And it, speaking of AJ, so AJ was a captain, and you know he was trying to flex his captain muscles on me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, start running or whatever he said. And I'm like, no, I'm not running. I'm not, I didn't even play in the game because. I had just started playing, so I didn't play in the game. They got beat by somebody. I'm like, I'm not running. I didn't lose. I wasn't even there. <laughs> yeah, I remember. So, so, so make a long story short, me and him started pushing each other around. My brother was in the soccer, on the soccer field with his, with his soccer teammates. And I played soccer the year before. So the soccer team jumps the fence and runs over the field. So now we got the football team fighting the soccer team. And I, I used to be on the soccer team, so I'm just like, now I'm on the football team, so I don't even know. I'm just, I don't even know who I'm fighting. I'm, I, I'm, I'm fighting my own brother. <laughs> I think I was fighting my own brother at one point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> who, who, who actually who, who was, who was coming into my defense. So, so obviously, they break it up, boom, boom, boom. And uh, the next day, like, people just thought I wasn't going to, I was going to quit football, obviously, because I, it caused this whole ruckus. I'm just going to go play. I showed up the next day to football practice, and everybody's jaw was just, like, dropped. Like, yo, this dude really came back. And, and, and then that, and that was it. That was, uh, that was probably the one time in my life that I, I, I just, it wasn't, you know what I mean? I, I didn't have an option to say like, there was no, I didn't even think about quitting, you know what I mean? I just had to go back to show them like, yo, I'm not, they're not gonna get the better of me. And Rigo, and I think Rigo, Rigo was proud of that moment. And just it, looking in his eyes and, and and how he embraced me, that, yeah. that, that made me feel, that made me feel special, you know what I mean? Because, oh, because he knew that, he knew, he knew that moment that there was something special in me too, you know what I mean? No, he has to be uh, on number one on my list. Of uh, oh, the, yeah, most, the most intense human being on earth, like he's intense definitely, about man. anything, whatever he's doing. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> like even basketball, he was also my basketball. Uh, he was my basketball coach at one point, man. And, and uh, and I remember um, <laughs> playing JV basketball, freshman basketball. He was a coach, and the dude, we used to, he used to get us. I mean, he was intense, bro. He would, he would, he would run with us. Like we, had, we would do suicides, and the kids will, and the kids will cry about it. Rigo would do the suicides and we would have to watch him as he's doing them. Yeah. So 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 he would do he would do the suicides to show us, to show us, like, look, I'm doing it first. So now you guys do it. And that's not and that's the difference right there. He almost cut Nick Seftis in half with no fucking with no pads on. He sent him out oh, on man. the ambulance. <laughs> oh man. I think there was a time where they put the pads on and came out too. There oh, was a yeah. time where I think it was a practice where he put the put the pads on and came out. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo, man, that was bad. But yo, Rigo made it. Rigo turned not not just not just athletes, but even when I was talking to one of my friends, Anthony Jafrida, he he was a student at Leicester, and Rigo was his teacher. He was like, "Yo, Rigo made 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 a man out of a lot of a lot of boys in high school." Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Yep. Just by just you know just by by, by respect, his res he he demanded respect. He respected you back. And, and, and that's what it was all about. It was all like, you know, he was obviously, he was aggressive, his demeanor was whatever, but he was very respectful to you and you can show them respect back. But he turned a lot of boys into men in both South High and Leicester, you know? The one thing I can I can pull from him is he is a dude that is talking to you in your face and if you don't think you can do it or you don't want to do it, he'll do it right in front of you. Like he'll leave exactly. by example, yep. you know? He's yep. that dude and I, you know. He's got to be under I mean, the radar. He, he, he's got to be way under the radar as far as coaching goes. Like, oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean, even his wife. You know, his wife was a was a track coach my junior year. I was like, like I said, I, I was ranked like top three in a in a hundred and two hundred, and we had a, a go four by one team. And I, I her class. All she had to do was give me a C plus, and I was I'll be eligible to play. 
she failed me, so I was uneligible like that season, yo. But that, but that was that's that's part. That was a lesson that I needed to learn. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I was like, oh, it's a coach. The coach is definitely gonna pass me. She's like, hell no. Nah. <laughs> she was like, no sir. She was like, no sir. She's like, you, you you earn what you did. You did you did you didn't do anything. You got a D. <laughs> I was like, damn. Who uh, yeah, man. who is your your um assistant principal at South? Um, we had I think it, it was Shikoni. So I had Miss Beninda, I had yeah. Shikoni, and I and I had and I had Miss how was it Harrington? Yeah. Yeah. So I had I had those three, and then uh, and then at one point I think I think that at the end there was Kramer. So I had yeah. I had the uh, Yep, Beninda, Harrington, and Shikoni. Now, what's your uh, relationship with Jeff? Jeff, so Jeff Kramer was, uh, he's really the, the the person that, once Rigo left, he was the one that took me under his wing, Jeff and Jerry. Yeah. Um, uh, obviously, their brothers, Jeff, Jerry, and John Kramer. Legendary John brothers, Kramer um, family. Legendary. Yep. So, so Jeff Jeff basically took over the football team once uh, once uh, um, everybody left. Rigo went to Leicester, and, and, and he just took me under his wing. He recognized... Uh, it was I was talented, and his his brother Jerry would pick me up every day. We'll go working out, lift weights. Well, um, you know, and it just like he's, they, they were another one. They he just kind of they did turn me into a man. You know, I was I was just a boy that didn't understand anything really. So they kind of took me under the wing, worked out with me, boom, boom, boom. He boosted me with confidence, you know. Yeah. And then and the rest is history. And the rest is history. I gotta get in touch with them and get a do do a a Kramer family podcast, man. I mean, Jerry. Jerry had a great career, I think, in everything he did. <laughs> oh, he did, yeah, yeah, of course. With the baseball and everything else. Yeah, yep. So, man, I mean, these are legends that come out of here. People overlook that, you know? Like, it, you gotta, we got to keep it alive, you know? I mean, people forget, Jordan, Jordan Lucas came from South High, man. He did. You know what I mean? Hey, he, he's and, on and, the radar, and, man. Yeah. He's on the radar. And, no, and, and nobody, a lot of people don't even know that. You're like, oh, I'm like, yo, dog, you know Jordan? His first video was shot by Mr. By what was what's his name? Uh, well, Pat. Pat Williams shot his first video at, at South High. Yep, yep. Another well, legendary you know, teacher, we, man. You know, so we like you said, we come, we we we're right back in the mix, man. This is gonna be and, awesome. And, and, and that's why, and that's why your 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 podcast is beautiful because, like like you said, there's nobody that's really that's really doing that. You know what I mean? We gotta there's keep nobody it alive, doing man. Yeah. You know? Positivity, no and, and we went way back with those dudes, man. Like when it was even, I mean, you were you were way young, but yeah. when uh, Jerome Johnson got killed at South, we, yep. we talked about that. That really that put the black mark on that school, and it was dude. I wouldn't change was, that I, for anything. Yeah, it, Brian Brian Watson. Brian Watson actually was about. Oh, I played in an arena football team with him. The Watsons, the Watson family. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think he was there at the time too. But yeah, but, but it's crazy, man. This is. The amount of the amount of talented kids. I think there's a guy now, something summit. I think is an artist, and he's uh he's he's from South High too. We uh, we've had a few um, artists. The show that I'm doing right now with Demar Langford, that work in progress. We've yeah. had a couple of people that performed it at uh, Join a Fest, and with you know spotlighting the artists. There's, well, I'm doing the athletes. He's taking care of all the, all the music right now. We got a bunch yep. of good ideas, but anybody that you know that needs like a spotlight that ain't getting recognized, you know, because what's the whatever, you know, we're trying to put those people out here. This place is awesome. Yeah, exactly. man. I wouldn't change it for the world. You know, that's what we're trying to look at. We got, I mean, that as far as I'm concerned, you have to be the, the number one running back in South High history, yards wise. You have to be. I'm, I mean, if I'm not, I'm definitely up there, you know, it's, I mean, are you, do you think you do you feel safe with what uh, what Angelo did last night? Uh no no I I feel I feel like no no I feel like he's gonna break everything. I, so so he's gonna that I mean I mean first of all, anytime you score seven touchdowns you're not even tired. That's like you know what I mean that's that's, that's good in itself. Seven TDs. He was still he was still looked fresh. I I just saw a clip. His dad was like yo, he was ready to go. So I kept on giving the ball. So the reality is man. I wouldn't be surprised if he has a, a ten touchdown game. You know what I mean? Yeah, the most we talked about earlier, the most touchdowns you've had in the game. The most I had, I used to, yo, know, it was different back when I played. They used to call a lot back, so there's still like this. I don't know, I don't know for a reason what it was, whether they didn't like, they didn't like our school or, or they just, it was just like whatever, it was bullshit, whatever. But 
Yeah. There was games where I would score, I would score eight touchdowns, and they would call it. They would call so many back. So like, <laughs> I think the most I scored was six in a game that that none, none, none got called back. But I mean, I had games where I scored eight, and I, I would look back, and there's a flag, and I'm like, hold it. I'm like, everybody's bigger than us. How could they? <laughs> like, no you know kidding, I mean? man. No kidding. So, so, but but besides, yes, I think six six is the most I had that uh that stood. You know, phenomenal, phenomenal. And, and yards wise, I think yards wise, I got close to five hundred before. So I mean, you know, five close to five hundred and four. I think before I went a bunch of times, like, like definitely. I was gonna say that. Oh, I know five hundred or four. I thought you said five hundred yards. Yeah. So, so I, I had I had a bunch of games where I rushed for over four hundred yards, uh, or close to five hundred. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I mean, all they did, all they used to get toss right, toss left, man. Uh, it was were, like a track uh, meet. Returning kicks too, right? Yeah. How many? It was like, it was how a, many returns? Man, if one game we played Tentasco, the first game, like I said, I juked the whole team twice and scored the <laughs> first first time touching. It was crazy. I, and I have I'm gonna put the clip up. I'm gonna get the clip. I have all those videos, so I'm gonna put all that content pretty soon on my um on my Instagram. So obviously you you you'll you have that too. So you can put on your on your stuff. Let me see if but, I can. Uh, I think I can I can screen share that. But I had a bunch of I had oh I used to have that's how that's how I actually started my football career. I scored a I had a kickoff return against Doherty. The my fresh my my sophomore year AJ's last year, like the maybe the, the last the last of your of your group that senior year. So that's when they recognized I was really fast. It was off a kickoff return. So um. so it was it, it was that it was that kickoff return that actually made the Kramers obviously realize yo this dude is quick and fast. And so they just like I said they took me out, they took me out under their wing, and uh you know like which every day will pick me up we'll go work out. I started lifting with him, you know. Like I said, he made, you know, I, that was that was that was really what it was, man. Jerry Kramer, man, and yeah, John Kramer. I, Jerry Kramer took oh. care of me, man. I'll tell you, my my yeah, my in '97, man, when he first got there, he was really really good to me. And uh, I'll even, tell you one even thing, John, I, even John, John, I, I worked yeah. I worked with John Kramer for two summers for a summer job. We would just go around different parks, cleaning the parks in Worcester and stuff like that. And that was the first time I really got paid. You know what I mean? I'll tell you a good story about Jerry. He uh -huh. one year uh, South High put on like a, a work like thing for the summer. So like I don't know, a dozen of us signed up for this thing, right? And it was at TJ Maxx warehouse. Yeah, and we walked in. I think twelve out of fourteen of us, or whatever it was, walked out within like fifteen minutes because they were just hot. Like we, you know, your summer you're not gonna spend it in a warehouse at least at that age. Well, Jesse yeah. Kawasaki ended up staying and getting a great job like through Jerry and everything, you know, and uh, ended up working with the school system and everything. But it was so funny. Jerry's like, we're going to be playing cards. We're going to be hanging out. And then we got there and we were packing undies and boxes, bro, doing a scan <laughs> gun like in the heat, like slave work. Come on. I was like, man, I'm 18. But uh, but uh, he, it was funny. It was funny. He, um, he was a good dude, man. He he still yeah, is. I'll tell you one thing. I don't know if I want to see him on the other side mad. I'm glad he, he was on my Oh team. no, definitely definitely <laughs> not, man. That's it's like, you know, man, that's that's that that's like you know, you go in a dark alley. He's he's a person I want to go to a dark alley with, not against. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I would exactly. take Jerry Kramer. I would take Jerry Kramer and Rigo with me in a battle. That's all I need. You know what I'm saying? And and, and, and and Jim Miller. I, and, and, and Jim Miller just and Jim Miller the getaway driver. And yeah. <laughs> you, know? you know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I show up like Bruce Lee. I got I got Rigo and Jerry. I don't know, man. I think I think I think I, I could take my chance with anybody in the world with those two, man. Rigo's so, not gonna not Rigo's not gonna lose unless he dies. He's not exactly. I don't think I don't think Jerry is I don't think Jerry is either. Yeah, Jerry. <laughs> And just have, <laughs> have Coach Hall and uh, Freddie on the outside, just in case. And, oh, man. I mean, all these, all these coaches, man, legendary people we're talking about, you know? They had the Super Bowl. They had the 80 Super Bowl. Oh, you jumped off again. Oh, I think his phone might have died. So, guys, what a great interview tonight. I, I mean, it ended like that even, even better. He was still on the bike at the end of it, so... Uh, we got another good one coming soon. Um, Weaver should be on. We got a few other people. But really, this week has been incredible. We got Wednesday night coming up here with uh, AJ Rivera. Uh, phenomenal. Rivera Promotions. 
Um, we got work in progress again this week. We're going to announce a guest later in the week. Uh, might even have two, to be honest. But this last week, man, after having this on tonight, and Angelo LaRose is here, guys. South High, stand up. We're going to take it easy for the night. And uh, shout the Platts Landscaping, Sharns Boxing. We got the huge boxing event coming up this week and uh, next two weeks in Framingham, October 16th. T.G. Castro is about to take Framingham down. So, everybody, great night. Enjoy your weekend. Be safe.